Okay, we're back. We're live. America finding its way here at a given Thursday at 11. And we have the troop. Um, Tim is Tim is on vacations. Uh, Stephanie uh, Stahl Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch. Today we're going to talk about July 4th because July 4th is coming soon. It's coming on Sunday, observed on Monday. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you. Uh-huh. I love- Let's start with you, Stephanie. <clears throat> You know, you've been in and around the federal government for your whole life. And um, I wonder how you feel about it in terms of patriotism. Um, you know, I, I just before we start that, I just want to tell you that we had Zap Slatterper on one July 4th. He's a retired admiral, Navy admiral. And he, he said that there was one thing that happened in his life that he'll never forget was he was ferrying a plane over to Vietnam. All right. <clears throat> Vietnam, not a good word, actually. Ferrying a plane, a fighter plane over to Vietnam, and it had to fly over the country. And um, and uh, it was on July, for the evening of July 4th, um, way back when in Vietnam times. And he looked down at the country and he saw fireworks all across America. And it touched him to the point where he could sort of see the yeah. patriotism palpably all across America despite the fact we were in an unpopular war. It's very interesting that, that he would remember that. So, Stephanie, what are your thoughts about July 4th? Oh, well, yes, that is um, a very interesting tale um, and story because I had I have a little similar one for when we were in Japan uh, with the compliments of the federal government and, you know, Japan and their bases were backups for the Vietnam War too, you know, with the hospitals and all of the administration and support. But the the story is that it took a long, uh, was the planes were slower then and people came back and said they had gone back to the main, to, to U.S. And then um, while they were on the plane, they were told to look out the window because they were like over the heartland of the country and the corn and the wheat and everything you could see it from way high up the bread basket it was just beautiful and spontaneously everybody started to sing america the beautiful and it was so moving it it was even just to hear and tell the story it's just so moving just to know that that happens spontaneously sometimes so yes i'm i'm a patriot um well i mean an old fashioned kind of patriot and uh, and yes, you're right. I've been federally funded. Hospital, but because it was um, a big, but my all my sibs did, and I, I don't know why I missed it. But anyhow, my mother, I guess, didn't want to go there. So yes, and uh, with uh, going to places around the world, compliments of the federal government. So yes, I do um, think about my country very dearly and also i've been brought to think about its flaws because i know that when i was in um iraq uh and being a consultant there for what they were trying to do in education and they asked me questions that indicated that they thought we did all these really wonderful things and that was a breakthrough for me because my inside my head i was like oh my god they're asking you know me for what we do in America. And in America, we don't even have the goals they have here. And just for example, people, the Iraqis, just like uh, the Greenlanders and some and other countries, they, they have goals for their students to graduate from high school and have quadrilingualism. That's knowing four languages. Because they have to know their their primary language of the country, they have to know what is that secondary language. In the case of Iraq, it was Kurdish, and then they had to know at least one or two other languages to do business with France or Russia or what, whoever would be their uh, business partner. I mean, so others um, think very highly of us, or did. <laughs> there was a time when yes, we were the the nation on the hill, I guess. So yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let me move to you, uh, Cynthia. You know, everything we hear today, or very nearly everything, and certainly during the Trump years, and for that matter, since Vietnam, um, and I guess uh, you could also say Rumsfeld's death showed us how um, unwise those wars were 
that he, you know, jammed us into. Um, so, you know, the question is all these negative things. How does, how does that affect your patriotism? Can you and others similarly situated and inclined can feel patriotic given all the negative things, not only now, not only during Trump, but through our lives that we have heard about this country and its sensibilities and, and prospects and its, you know, visions and so forth? Wow, that's a big... Uh, um... I still feel all kinds of patriotism. I love my country. In the midst of being on Trump week for the last three years and following what that crazy man did um, and trying to understand how people could uh, sacrifice their integrity in order to get what they wanted in, in the form of judges and um, you know uh, things like this, so uh, tax cuts and whatnot. Um, and, and that's difficult for me. And, and so it's, I still struggle. And this is for the first time in my life that I've ever struggled like this, because I've always been one of those people that stands for the, you know, <laughs> the, our, our anthem, uh, I stand, even if I'm in a restaurant and I'm, it's a sports bar and the national anthem comes on, I stand up and I'll yell at everybody else in this, the restaurant to stand up too, because that's that's the kind of patriot that I've always, always been. Um, I got a couple of quotes here today. And one that I think is, is important. And it's from Abraham Lincoln. Um, and it says, I like to see a man proud of the place in which he lives. I like to see a man live so that his place will be proud of him. And I, I think that's kind of what we're kind of going through right now in this country, um, there's a lot of misinformation and lies and, and things that, and fighting like I've never seen for our country before. And sure, you know, you talk about, about going back as far as Vietnam and sure, there was a lot of, you know, peace marches and all that. There was a lot of unrest then, but even then we all came together as a country right away. And the last time I saw that was after 9-11. I was in New York and I was on the ferry going past the Statue of Liberty. And I was standing out on the balcony or the little thing. It was wintertime. So it was really cold. I was out there by myself and I just started singing my country tis of thee. It just sort of came over me and I started singing. And then I didn't really realize that I got so into singing it then all of a sudden I hear all these voices up behind me, sort of like Stephanie's story a few minutes ago. All these people, there must have been 30 of them, had all come out on the balcony with me. And we all stood there and sang My Country Tis of Thee. We were all crying and hugging. And that's the kind of, of stuff to me that is, that is America and that makes me proud to be in this country and to hope that my country will be proud of me. Wow. Wow, Winston, can you can you top that? Uh it it's it not not about trying to top these ladies or will never succeed. <laughs> uh so uh, I can only just try and hold my uh my own here. but uh, we're all patriots. We all love this nation very deeply. That's evident over the last year we've been together and uh longer for the Ladies that have been on the show for me, you, you know, that patriotism is it, it. There's nothing uh, there. This is a wonderful country. This is why we fight for it. This is why we fight for its best and highest and truest values. It's why we why we why we criticize it and why we want it to be better. Why we why we face its problems while we look at them openly and address them and say we don't want to cover them up. So they fester. We want to bring light on them so that we can continue to reinvest our um, our energies and our best thoughts into making this a group and keeping it to be a great nation. And this So is, what, did, what did the Trump administration do for us then? The Trump administration was a gift for us to see where we need to shore up, reinvigorate ourselves, recommit, reconnect, uh, replace, repair, 
all of the all of the re's right now uh, that that we got to do and and show us what it is that we've lost and what we could potentially much more lose. So I think it was it was a, a gift given to us. And it, you know, there's a, as long as Cynthia's giving some quotes, let me just throw out a couple. William Jefferson Clinton, the golden years of the 90s, says there is nothing wrong with America that cannot be cured by what is right with America. John Lewis, the late great John Lewis, says, I want to see young people in America feel the spirit of the 1960s and find a way to get in the way, to find a way to get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. And I think we're seeing that with the uh, the whole generation coming up. Um, you know, Abraham Lincoln, you said Abraham, you mentioned Abraham Lincoln, great American, obviously. My dream is of a place and a time where America will once again be seen as the last best hope of Earth. And, you know, that this is America constantly, every, we all have to always, always give back to this nation. It's like Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? Truman, America was not built, he says, America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination and unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. Is this a perfect nation? No. Does it have warts? Yes. And does it have flaws? Yes. Do we address those head on? Yes. This is, we are more, we're going towards a more perfect union all the time. And it is up to each of us individually, generationally, organizationally to recommit to the ideals and hopes and best promises of this nation. Because if we don't, the alternative is not good. And that's what patriotism is. It's it's not about nationalism. It's about patriotism. It's a love of country. And this is uh, right and good and something that we uh, should all feel. And when we look around and we point, well, they should do something about this and they should do something. Well, guess what? You know what? There's four fingers or thumbs pointing back at you when you say they. So Get out there and do something. Make your country a better place. Make our country a better place by contributing however you can, um, whether it's on being a host on Big Tech or volunteering for the, the Boy Scouts or, or um, cleaning up uh, trash or writing a letter to uh, the editor or your congressman or helping a little old lady across the street, whatever it is. You know, make one, of, one of the strains of in the American culture is exceptionalism. And the historians will tell you that in the 19th century, we developed this notion that we were the best. And in the 20th century, too, for a time, we developed this notion that we were the best. Part of that, of course, was winning World War I and World War II um, and overcoming you know, all the issues around those wars. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, in some sense, uh, patriotism and July 4th, um, is different because it, it's nostalgia, isn't it, Stephanie? It's largely nostalgia. And, and can you, you know, when you look at patriotism on July 4th, and P.S., lest we forget, July 4th is about independence from Britain. It's about writing a constitution. It's about inventing a new system of government, democracy, for the first time in the world. Um, you know, the, Pretty great, you know, pretty great achievements, but but it's it seems to me that patriotism is is retrospective these days, and it's it's you know when you see how weak we have been, um, it, it was only six months ago we had an insurrection in our in the heart of our government, um, so you know it, I think you have to separate um, nostalgia from optimism or whatever you feel about the future. Where, where, you, where are you in that, in that continuum, Stephanie? Well, I, I think back to the fact that um, we were a colony and, and we had overlords and seers and to, with King. And, and we had to um, move out from under that once we felt oppressed. So we've had all of these experiences as a nation, um, as a people. And, um, and uh, so we, we, sh we need to be in demonstrating that we understand those issues and that we know what we had to do that was the extreme to get out of it, to get out from under it and establish our own country. 
and uh, and we want to avoid having to do anybody having to do that again. Because uh, and we have had some success in that over what two hundred forty years or something of modeling that this is how it works. But now we're thrown into a situation where we have corruption and our institutions are failing and um, we're questioning um, what, what's going on here and uh, what are our values and do enough of us share that values that made all of this country happen. So, I, yeah, You know, and, and, and things were different in many ways in the 18th century when we invented this new form of government. And the question is, uh, has this new form of government kept up uh, with the changes in our world, with the uh, the science, the technology, you know, the, the social dynamic of the world? It's it's really different now, and arguably you have to keep up with it. That's why we have these things called amendments uh, to keep up with it. On the other hand, you know, we we've seen fragility, we've seen you know cracks in the armor, we've seen. Uh, trouble in River City, so to speak. We've we, we've seen uh, parts of the government that, that simply aren't functioning right now. Um, th- this runs a different course. This contends with the old-fashioned notion of exceptionalism. Um, now, how do you feel about that? It must be a mixed bag, at least for some people right now. You think of the government failing, there's no easy solution to that. Uh, The damage that was done by one president, um, you know, what, 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 you know, how how does that mesh with the notion of exceptionalism and a brand new form of government that was going to be the best in the world? Yeah, can I comment on that? Um, I, I just, respect and realize um, it was kind of an epiphany when I thought about the founding fathers and wish there had been mothers too, but it wasn't in. (laughs) Betsy Ross. (laughs) But, but, But what happened to have that DNA present itself in those men in the same place, in the same time of their lives, their productive portion of their lives? How miraculous was that, that they came all together and they battled it out for the best outcome they could make for these big ideas. So that has led me to look for capacity in the leaders and talk about capacity in our leaders and how and, and, and education to have uh, people understand what it takes to be in those positions and and what you need to have to be there to make the best decision. So anyhow, that's that's my conundrum right now. No, we're not doing it as well as we did. And I don't know if the DNA is around anymore. It's not certainly not all in the same place like New England. But um, yeah, I, uh, the East Coast. So that has just overwhelmed me um, that that was such a miracle that happened. And we have this paper from them that has... Uh, lasted quite a long while, has done some very good things. But you're right. The amendments are needed. It, you know, we have to find the people with the capacity to help us make the changes that have it fit for the next 250 years. Yeah, my own emotional experience, before we go to you again, Cynthia, my own emotional experience was here on ThinkTech when uh, we were talking about immigration reform. And I decided I would read a poem uh, on the base of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, give me your um, tired, huddled, tired you know, yes. masses yearning to breathe free. Um, and I hadn't read that poem in a long time. I only remembered it faintly, but it seemed like a, an appropriate poem to read in view of what Trump was doing to every immigrant mm. uh, that he could get his hands on. And, you know, the country is great success. You guys will all agree with me has been the melting pot, uh, allowing people from all over the world to come here freely and make a life. That is truly, truly remarkable. That's our great gift to the world because it has shown others, other countries, the way. And so when I read that poem, it it actually, I couldn't finish it. I couldn't finish it. I was so taken emotionally by it. It is core for me. And yet, you know, we, we aren't going forward on this. We're going backward. 
Um, yesterday, there was a news story about anti-Semitism and the, um, you know, the authorities were reporting the extraordinary increases in anti-Semitism and anti-Asian racism and anti-Black racism and you name it. We, you know, the, the melting pot has has locked up somehow. And instead of going forward, which I have observed all my life here and elsewhere, um, we're going backward. But how does that play in terms of your view of the country? Because you have to have a view of the country in the future. You have to ideate. You have to have a vision for the, the, the ideal way it's going to be. Uh, how do you reconcile, you know, the obvious going backward direction now with your view of the country going forward? Well, <clears throat> you know, that exceptionalism that you were mentioning a little bit ago, I think has gotten perverted to be um, a racism instead of just a, an exceptionalism. I, I think that a large swath of the country is afraid that they will no longer be the majority. And they think that they are the only ones who are um, exceptional. And I, I experienced that when I lived in the South and, um, and it's, it's been emboldened, I think over these last four years by the last racist president that we had. And, and he would like to claim he's not racist, but in every action and everything he did and said, he showed that he lied and he really is a racist, even though he says he's not. But I like to hope that um, this same country that, you know, eight years and four years and eight years beforehand had, you know, elected a black man to be our president. There's hope. These, these loudmouth racists are going to hopefully eventually just go back to the house and stay there and stop teaching their, you know, next generation to be that way. And so I got a couple of quotes on this one, too. Um, <laughs> of course, what else is new, right? Um, so there's one from William Faulkner that I really like. And it says, we must be free, not because we claim freedom, but because we practice it. And I like that. I thought that was really good. Then I've got another one that I really love that is from uh, Ronald Reagan. We're blessed with the opportunity to stand for something, for liberty and freedom and fairness. And these are things worth fighting for, worth devoting our lives to. And, you know, that uh, freedom, fairness, liberty, all these people that, that are these, you know, the ones that are so loudly denouncing anyone of color and the ones that are you know, are, are, we can attribute these attacks and these, these you know, raised numbers of people that are being, anti, you know, anti-Semitism and anti-Asian and all this stuff, right? If they could really live up to the thing they say they support, which is the Constitution, which is liberty, freedom, fairness. That's what these things are. Yet they, uh, I don't know, conveniently convince themselves that they're above it or they deserve it more than anyone else. And that's the part that scares me and worries me about our country going forward. Well, Winston, you know, you used the word recommitment um, a little while ago, and I, I'm, I'm touched by that because that suggests that we've lost it to some extent. We have to recommit to it. And right now, you know, you have these, um, may I say, warring factions uh, th those who uh, you know really do believe in the Constitution, and those who would like to turn over the government, as we've seen in, in Washington, and there are even a substantial number of members of Congress who would like to turn over the government, even by their votes, 147 of them on January 6th. Um, so we have this tension going on. Uh, Tim uh, reports in his uh, travels in New England, um, you know that that people in New England are. Old-fashioned Yankees, they believe in the Constitution. Uh, they believe in all those, you know, all those high, high morals and ethics. Um, and, they, and they do not agree with uh, the divisiveness we are experiencing. But it is a tension. And 
And the question is, which side of that equation is going to prevail? And I take it that your use of the term recommitment means that you have to make special effort, effort beyond the effort in the past. You can't be an observer if you want to save the country. And you do that for patriotism. So my question is, how do you express the recommitment? Well, you know, I think the quotes we got are really good ones. I like the Ronald Reagan quote. It's, it's true. Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of a wonderful president, wonderful first lady. I mean, with freedom comes responsibility. Uh, Thurgood Marshall, Justice Marshall, Supreme Court Justice, says, when you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out, because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, pass it on. When I say recommit, that recommitment is not something that we've lost. It means that we need to constantly, constantly recommit, just like any relationship you have. If you don't feed it, it withers on the vine. And the relationship that we have with our nation, with our communities, with our organizations, if we don't feed them, they wither. Uh, you know, this is we're, we're a much more diverse nation now. Maybe we always were diverse. We just weren't up to sharing the power. But things have changed now. And so, again, um, you know, we we want to look at where the injustices are. We're willing to look at them in this country. We're willing to address them. We're able to address them. We're able to uh, uh, to look at, at fair play and 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 equal opportunity. These are, um, you know, the, the problem that we have is is these days is that people aren't feeling they're they're feeling um, partisan, and that's not what it's about. And I think on the Fourth of July we have a chance to check our baggage at the door, and we can all be Americans and say, okay, what are the base values that we all believe in? Now, sometimes those values might be quite different, and it's a it's a country of diversity. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but as uh, James Madison, our fourth president, said, the advancement and diffusion of knowledge is the only guardian of liberty. Unfortunately, these days, we got a lot of different um, diffusion of knowledge, whatever. The, the knowledge isn't always knowledge. It can be false facts and fake news and alternative facts. So we have to be ever vigilant as people um, have needed to be. I think... What we see now in, in America, and as you were saying, oh, is it, you know, you're, and we do get down on it, and we can get down on it. We have the luxury of getting down on it and pointing out its flaws, and that is a wonderful thing. And a huge majorities of people around the world, I think, don't have that opportunity. And the fact that we do is an amazing thing. It's stuck around for a long time. It's getting more diverse, more open, more Is it guaranteed, Winston? Nothing Here on July 4th, 2021, is our is country guaranteed. guaranteed? Nothing is guaranteed. You you recommit to it. I'm recommitting to it. This is a wonderful nation. It has it has issues like every other nation, but we are a big ship, and we need some. We've been making some uh, systemic uh, um, bad decisions. I think that we can, but we're, we're facing them. And we're facing them, and that's what the gift of, of Donald Trump in the last four years is that it really just put it into, into focus. But we have a lot of shoring up to do. Just look in any direction. You can pick something that you want to work on and go for it. Okay, whether, let's let's go around the, the, the table for our last comments because we're almost out of time. And let me, let me seed that discussion by saying, uh, hey, there are people in this country that want to see this country come down. They want to see it come down. There are people in this country that cannot, will not negotiate over this. Uh, they are filled with hatred. And in, in the process, they hate the country as it exists. Um, they're, they're hard to deal with. And you can have noble ideas, but query, what do you do when so many people are trying to bring the thing down? Um, can you still be patriotic? And how do you deal with them to make them patriotic, or at least to follow in what Winston is saying? Stephanie, you first. I'm uh, hopeful um, for uh, what is happening um, in the in um, the Congress, which has to, which I'm hoping will get better. And I think it will get better as models and practitioners of these values and beliefs 
um, cut, be more active. For example, Liz Cheney being willing to be on that committee as the bipartisan standard bearer. And she's taking a lot of risk on that. So I can't praise her enough for doing that work. And then, of course, the president. We've got somebody doing things that are about bringing unity. And let's hope that these are going to be powerful enough influences to move the institutions and certainly the Congress into more comedy and more problem solving for the purposes of the people in this nation hopefully, because the Senate really needs to get back to what it used to be. And if you saw that movie about Lincoln, the Lincoln movie, which is powerful because it shows the Senate in its role of what it used to be, which was a place where they had these gigantic discussions that were very high level and just got to the best place they could because of the leadership that they had. So hopefully we have those people. Okay, that DNA is still here of the founding fathers. (laughs) Just dribbled around. We got to get somehow. somehow. Yeah, but but as as uh, as we have heard, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. That has not changed from revolutionary times. And so um, those guys made some mistakes. They made the mistake of slavery, for example. Uh, arguably, they had to do that to build the nation. That's just the reality at the time, I suppose. It was a huge mistake, which we paid for with uh, a lot of lives. But the question is, um, you know, how do we how do we face this going forward? And part of it is a consciousness thing, Cynthia. What are your last comments? Well, you hear me often talk about um, my experience in the South, dealing with people that have these sort of... Uh, archaic, if you will, ideas about how things should be and how white people should be in charge of everything. And it, um, I don't have a magic answer for that, except for we got to go with what John Lewis said, you know, what, what Winston just said, what John Lewis, you know, we want our young people to get out there, get in some good trouble, be motivated enough to, to stand up to this, um, this sort of what's set in stone here for us. and. So we just need to break those stones apart and rearrange them just in the same way they were rearranged in the 19 uh, in the you know civil rights. We need we need them to to reignite now. Um, so I want to finish with a quote that I have from Condoleezza Rice. I love her. I think she's awesome. OK, the essence of America, that which really unites us is not ethnicity or nationality, or religion. It is an idea. And what an idea it is. That you can come from humble circumstances and do great things. True. True. Give me your tired huddle. Or longing to breathe free. <laughs> I, it still gets me. So, Winston, uh, I know it's last comments and you can say anything you want. I, I hope you say something slightly different. Um, you talked about the kids, the generation to come. They're the ones we vest our, our hope in. What is your message to them now, July 4th, 2021? It's no different than my message to all people that live in this nation. Get involved. Get involved. Find out how your government works. Find out what where our our pain points are. You know, reach out. Try and understand people. Educate each other and yourselves. Uh, you know, recommit to this best and greatest idea of this country: a uh, rule of law and a more perfect union. So, I, no, I, I'm going to give you the same answer, Jay. This country has always been an exceptional idea in the. Um, uh, imagination of humankind, and we uh, are continue down that path. We will stumble and fall, but we get up, we dust ourselves off, and we do better. And we recommit ourselves to doing better. You're part of it. We're part of it. All of us are part of it, but we have to be part of it. And if you don't be part of it, it withers on the vine. So eternal vigilance is where we need to end <laughs> this show because it, it, it that's just it. And uh, yeah, okay. love the ideas, okay. the best ideas of this nation. And if we do, uh, we stand a fighting chance. 
So Stephanie, Cynthia, and Winston, let's let's recommit to cover this. We're going to cover it. We're, we're going to watch this like a hawk. We're going to be as vigilant as anybody alive to see how it moves and how the how the dots connect. Thank you so much, not only for the past shows, but for the future. Uh, Stephanie, Cynthia, Winston, aloha. Aloha. Thank you.